Hey, yep. Right, as promised, a video on how to upgrade the instrument lights or telltale lights on the Royal Enfield Classic 500. I'm still scratching my head as to why the original bulbs are so dim on this bike. I mean, in normal daylight, you seriously struggle to be able to see them. As far as intensity goes, they don't come anywhere near as bright as any other vehicle I've ever owned. And I think the only circumstances under which they are going to be clearly legible is during the hours of darkness. But, you know, I don't ride during the hours of darkness very often these days. I don't need to. I thought about it long and hard in the year that I've owned the bullet and several sort of hypotheses have come to mind. All the bulbs apparently are 2 watt bulbs. Normally you would expect to see a 4 or 5 watt especially where telltale lights on a motorcycle are concerned. And it seems to me the most likely reason that Royal Enfield have gone for a 2 watt is possibly because the electrical system won't reliably stand anything more. You know, maybe it leads to overheating of the components in the instrument panel. Or maybe they'd encountered problems with it blowing fuses or drawing too much current from the system. I, I really don't know, I'm stabbing in the dark. I even liaised with Royal Enfield UK over this because I was having trouble identifying the bulbs for the ABS check light. My contact there was very eager to help me out with this problem and you know it is something that is aware of and that Royal Enfield are aware of but it wasn't aware of why you know this problem exists. Anyway if you remember when I first got the bike I noticed uh, just after a few days of ownership actually that the ABS check light wasn't working which potentially is a serious problem because you don't know whether your ABS is working or not. And I had a fiddle about with the bulb and got it working again. I blamed it on a poor PDI, but I've had to make a U-turn on that theory because even after I'd fixed it, it went again and continued to be a problem. There are two types of bulb used in the instrument cluster as a whole on the bullet. But the whole thing gets a bit complicated. Obviously, the bullet has been in production for decades. And over the various decades of production, Royal Enfield have changed the type and model of bulbs used in different applications on the instruments. All the bulbs used in the main sort of speedo housing are a standard T10 bulb. They're a very common size and you can buy them just about anywhere but the ones that come with the bike are very dim and these are the ones that are incorporated into the backlight for the speedometer so that you can see it during the hours of darkness and also your main beam your neutral light and your indicator light now your petrol light your ecu warning light and of course your abs light are in a different housing in what used to be the ammeter and these are a much smaller T5 type bulb and these are not so easy to find. Now the main problem that I had is that these bulbs are so tiny that the manufacturers are not able to sort of put any designation on them so you can't actually tell by looking at them what type of bulb they are. I couldn't find anything like them online. I took one into several motorist shops and they all said they'd never seen one that size before. And I couldn't even find any reference to them on the various Royal Enfield forums where people had upgraded their telltale light. Because to be quite honest, as long as the bulbs are functioning correctly, these three lights are quite acceptably legible, there's no problem with them. Now to cut a long story short, I'd taken several measurements of these bulbs and I was researching online eventually found a US site that specializes in LED replacement bulbs and discovered that they were actually a T5 because the blade width on them is five millimeters on the T10s it's 10 millimeters which all seems quite logical now but at the time when I was sort of researching it it just it seemed unfathomable now once I was armed with the correct name for these bulbs I managed to find an LED replacement reasonably easy on Amazon. Now there are two reasons that this particular ABS light kept failing. One is that these bulbs are very tiny, 
the contacts on them are also very tiny and fragile and they tend to bend out of place very easily. The other problem is the type of bulb holder that Royal Enfield have chosen. They're made out of rubber, the entire thing is rubber, with just some delicate and very thin brass connectors inside. Now these little light fittings are a very tight fit and the problem is whilst you're trying to coax them out of the housing you distort the rubber which in turn distorts the actual connectors inside and the whole thing was a very loose fit where the bulb was concerned so it was shaking loose over time and even though I'd done everything I could to coax these connectors back into place because those little glass capsules are so slippery it had just got to a point where the bulb wouldn't hold in place anymore so i replaced it with some led t5s and whilst i was at it i also replaced the ecu light and the petrol light now while i'd been researching all this one thing that i gleaned from other people's experiences of led replacements was that the card type or solid state type are the most reliable and the best performers rather than the one that are designed to look like a conventional bulb but that have a light emitter inside because basically there's nothing to go wrong with them it's just a solid state circuit also the thickness of the spade connector on these means that they're much more reliable in these types of rubber mounts they're a lot grippier and they don't tend to slide out as easily as the glass ones. Just be careful when you do actually push them in. So that was those three lights sorted. They are actually only a 0.6 watt bulb. But the light emitted is the equivalent of 2 watts, which is what the originals were. I did that a couple of months ago. They've been very reliable ever since. I've not had any problems. Now, as for the T10 replacements for the main speedo module, I settled on these Aglint T10 LED replacements. They are only a 2 watt emitter, which keeps them within the specification for the bike, but they give off the equivalent of 5 watt luminance. And in this case, I chose the model with the LED emitters on either side rather than on the top because I had read of accounts of people that fitted them with the top emitters and on a night time people were complaining that they were sort of shining directly in the faces and they were just too bright they were distracting especially when you have your main beam on for long periods of time so my reasoning was that this particular model will emulate a standard incandescent type bulb more closely giving an easily readable light that won't distract or cause annoyance. Now before we get into the actual fitting procedure one thing I would like to say is that the main backlight for the speedo is only required on a night time but it's illuminated all the time. In this video I have fitted an LED replacement but it is quite noticeable even in harsh sunlight which I think again might mean that it's a little bit too bright during the hours of darkness so I would suggest that you leave the original T10 bulb in for your main speedo backlight and just change your telltale lights obviously that's completely up to you but my personal view is that you're probably better leaving the original bulb in right let's get on with the fitting Obviously you're going to need to remove the headlamp bezel lens and reflector to get into this area and you'll need to rest it on your front mudguard so I would recommend that you put a cloth of, or a rag of some sort on your mudguard to protect it while you're going through this procedure you don't want to scratch your paint work. I chose to remove the entire front assembly you can just take the bezel and lens out I've got big hands and I wanted maximum access if you decide you want to just take the bare minimum off that's entirely up to you you have a securing screw at the top and a securing screw at either side then the whole thing should just pop off quite easily exposing the business that you need to be attending to now the holder for the light that illuminates the speedo is right at the very front it's very accessible and easy to get at but the telltale lights are situated right at the back so you need to remove one or two items so that you can get your hands in there 
I would recommend that you remove the backlight bulb holder anyway for easier access but the next thing you need to turn your attention to is the speedo cable. It's just a nailed fitting, unscrew it with your fingers and then pull the speedo cable out of the speedo and just secrete it to one side out of the way. And the next thing that's going to be in the way is the bracket that actually holds the speedo in place. Theoretically, you can remove the speedo from the mounting so that you can fit these items a lot easier from the top. The problem is the speedo is a very tight fit into the housing. It's very difficult to get out and I would argue that it's probably easier to do it this way than try to remove it. Now, as I've already said, I took the decision at the time to change the standard backlight bulb for an LED. It's optional whether you go ahead and do that or not. Just be careful when pushing these LED emitters in to make sure that they're lined up properly with the contacts inside. You don't want to crush them or deform them and they are a tight fit, which is a good thing. Now the speedo clamp or bracket is held in place with just two 8mm nuts and I would recommend a ratcheting ring spanner to remove these. It's very easy. Just remove both nuts and then pull the actual bracket itself out of the way and then you've got access to those three bulb fittings at the back. Now these fittings are all made from rubber although they are a little bit more robust than those T5 fittings that I spoke about earlier on. And so are the brass contacts inside, but I would still err on the side of caution. It will still easily be possible to distort these if you get too rough with them. I wouldn't recommend using any sort of tool like a screwdriver. Just carefully prise them out with your fingernails. Now, as you're watching it here now from left to right, you will have your indicator on the left hand side, your neutral light in the middle which is just behind the bottom of the actual speedo housing there, and then on the right the one that I've just withdrawn, that is your main beam indicator. I would advise that where you can, take them out one at a time and replace them to stop yourself from getting mixed up. If you do get mixed up, it really isn't a big problem. The worst that's going to happen is that you're main beam is going to start flashing when you put your indicator on or your neutral light's going to come on when you put your main beam on you know all you need to do is just pull them out and swap them around till you get them in the right hole basically in fact if i remember correctly while i was filming i put the backlight fitting into the main beam indicator it's easily done it's not going to cause any damage to anything it's just going to confuse you now the blades on these leds are a little bit thicker than the oem glass equivalent so they are a tighter fit just make sure when you insert them that you line them up properly with the connectors inside so you don't end up crushing the connectors Right, once you've got all your bulbs swapped for LED emitters, obviously the next thing to do is to check that you've got all your bulbs in the right place and that they're all working correctly, which in my case involved swapping the main beam indicator for the backlight. You can then go ahead and put the speedo clamp or retaining bracket back in place and replace the two nuts. Don't over tighten them. The end of the speedo cable is sort of slotted and it needs to engage into a corresponding slot in the mechanism for the speedo. Just make sure you get it lined up properly before screwing the collar back up. 
it's a piece of kit you shouldn't have any trouble with it and then finally replace the speedo illuminator or backlight bulb now on man this had a sort of a plastic sleeve which is designed to push over the fitting at the back of the actual speedo itself i'm not quite sure what that's there for but i replaced it anyway and that's it the job's a good one it's just a matter of putting your light back together right cost now while i was looking into this if i was going to buy all these bulbs individually it was going to cost me more than just buying two bulk packs of 10 and there's always the added danger especially when you're buying chinese products that if you just bought enough items to do the job there's always going to be one that doesn't work properly so i decided it would be better to have backups than having to reorder to replace defective items now whether it is required or not for this application i ordered can bus compatible replacements just so that we didn't have any issues and of course being a yorkshireman i looked very carefully for the best deal possible so for two packs of 10 that's 10 t5s and 10 t10s it cost me just under 20 pounds now obviously you're going to have some left over so you know you can either keep them as spares you can stick them on ebay or if you have friends that have bullets or you're a member of a royal enfield club or something you can perhaps swap give or exchange them with other people either way i don't think it's a huge outlay for peace of man and actually being able to tell whether you've got your indicators or your main beam on or not now i think it's fair to say that in normal ambient lighting conditions the telltale lights were useless you could barely see the neutral light and believe it or not the indicator light is running here nor could you see the main beam light during daylight hours in daylight they were pretty much ineffective now it's very easy to get carried away with an upgrade like this and go for the biggest brightest upgrade you can find but i think you need to be sensible and find a balance it's important to remember that the opacity of the filter on the main beam indicator is denser than the neutral and the indicator filters the manufacturers do it like that so that you don't have a blue light glaring at you for long periods of time if you're riding in the dark and i filmed this bit under very harsh strong sunlit conditions and what I think this configuration has achieved is an easily legible set of telltale lights that work in all ambient lighting conditions and are not overpowering during the hours of darkness. As I've already said, I am going to replace the Speedo backlight with one of the original bulbs because I think that is going to be adequate for nighttime riding. The object here isn't to turn your bike into a two-wheel discotheque. You're just trying to achieve usable instrument lights in all lighting conditions. Less than £20 with spares for this conversion I don't think is a big investment. And yes, I admit these lights should have been right from the factory, but that's all part of bullet ownership. But these LEDs do have a stated lifespan of 30,000 hours continuous burn time, so they should last me out, and personally I think it's a worthwhile investment. Now obviously I will leave links for these two bulb packs in the video description down below to Amazon, which is where I got them from. Obviously, you can look for cheaper alternative if that's what you want to do, but I cannot guarantee that they will work. At least I've tested these extensively and I know they do the job. Once again, thank you so much for watching this and my other videos and in doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider, if you're not a subscriber, subscribing to this channel. It does help me out and I do appreciate it every subscriber that i have now i am of course going to be back next week so until then if you're riding in this glorious weather please ride safely and i'll see you soon